In question 9, we have to determine which of these experiments, A, B, or C, is more likely to happen. Well, let's figure out the theoretical probability for each and compare them. Theoretical probabilities is expressed as a ratio. On the top is the number of ways to get what you want, or in other words, the number of favorable outcomes. And on the bottom is the number of all possible outcomes. And the key here is that these possible outcomes must be all equally likely. So let's look at our experiment A. We have to figure out the theoretical probability of rolling a 4 or greater on uh, when we roll a number cube. Okay, so let's start by asking ourselves what are all the possibilities? And when we roll the cube or the dice, we can see we can get a 1 or a 2, a 3, a 4, a 5, or a 6. So there are six possibilities, and these six possibilities are all equally likely. So that's the total number of all possibilities on the bottom. Now we want to get a 4 or greater. So how many ways can we get 4 or greater? Well, let's take a look. We can get it by rolling a 4 or a 5 or a 6. So there are one, two, three ways of getting what we want, or our favorable outcomes. So that goes on the top. So we have a three out of six chance of rolling four or greater. Now let's try experiment B. What's the theoretical probability of spinning the arrow below and it landing on an even number? Well, let's look at all possible places the arrow could land if we spin it. It could land here, it could land here, it could land here, it could land here, and it could also land right here. So there are one, two, three, four, five possibilities. So the number that goes in the bottom of our ratio would be five to represent all the possible outcomes, all the possibilities that are equally likely. Now we have to determine how many of the spots that we can land represent an even number. Okay, let's erase our arrow so we can see. So this piece here is an even number. This piece here is an even number. And this piece here represents an even number. So there are one, two, three favorable outcomes, the ones that we want. So the number 3 goes on the top of our ratio. So there's a 3 out of 5 chance of landing on an even number. All right, let's look at experiment C. So we're looking at selecting a marble from the bag, and we want to get an odd number. OK, so what are all the possibilities? Well, in the bag, there are 10 marbles. So there are 10 options that are equally likely. And that represents all the possible outcomes. OK, so now we ask ourselves how many are odd. Well, there is an odd one there. That's one. That's an odd one. That's a second option. Third option. Fourth option. Fifth option. The rest are even. So there are one, two, three, four, five. So there are five ways to get the outcome we want, an odd marble. Okay, we figured out the theoretical probability for each of these experiments. Now we have to compare these ratios. Now they are fractions, so to compare fractions we need to have a common denominator. Now if I look at the first one here, I could divide the top and the bottom by three, and that would give me one half. Then if I look at the denominators of each of these, 2, 5, and 10, the common denominator there is 10, because 5 goes into 10 and 2 goes into 10. So if I multiply the top and the bottom here by 5, I'd get 5 tenths. And if I multiply the top and the bottom here by 2, I'd end up with 6 tenths. And this one is already with a denominator of 10, so I can leave it. Now, if we compare these theoretical probabilities, the greater one 
is this one here, 6 tenths. So experiment B is more likely to happen. It has a greater theoretical probability than the others. Now we could have also converted these uh, fractions or ratios to percents. So for example, 5 tenths is equal to 50 percent. 6 tenths is 60 percent. And 5 tenths again here is 50 percent. Comparing the percentages, we see, again, experiment B has the greater theoretical probability. And there you go.